Following the introduction of the Pegden family, more newcomers become regular characters. Some people live on their wits. In this video we meet a curious mix of characters destined to be the also-rounds of life. Clem Smiler Hemingway is the eternally miserable and slow-witted comic foil similar to Stephen Lewis's character Inspector Blake in the hit 1960s ITV sitcom On the Buses. Foggy once commented, if his ears were any longer he'd look like a basset hound. Stephen Lewis worked as a bricklayer, electrician's mate and carpenter, then joined the Merchant Navy before turning to acting. Theatre Workshop director Joan Littlewood arranged for Lewis to get an audition. He landed the part and left the sea to become a member of the company. Lewis made his West End theatre debut in 1958. In 1960 he wrote a play that was made into the film Sparrows Can't Sing in 1963 starring Barbara Windsor, Roy Kinnear and Lewis himself as well as future On the Buses co-star Bob Grant. From 1969, Lewis starred as Inspector Blake in the sitcom On the Buses, which ran for 74 episodes and spawned three films. He co-wrote 12 episodes with fellow star Bob Grant. He appeared in many films, including The Last Remake of Beau Jest, Personal Services and Adventures of a Taxi Driver. Smiler is first seen as a one-off character in the series 10 episode That Certain Smile, in which the trio sneak Smiler's beloved dog Bess in to see him in hospital. During this first appearance he was referred to by everyone as the character's real name, Clem. The character was popular enough to be brought back on a semi-regular basis, but between his first and second appearances his dog died and his wife left him and went to live with her sister in Australia. He tells the trio he was married for 33 years but had been going through a bad patch for 32 years. In early appearances Smiler becomes Nora Batty's lodger which annoys jealous Compo. Smiler describes living with Nora Batty as like being in the army again always on jankers. For much of his time on the show he works for Auntie Wainwright despite her apparent reluctance to pay him. Compo asked how much Auntie was paying him to which Smiler replied, paying? I have to take it in what she calls bargains. Lewis left the show at the end of series 28 due to ill health. He was last seen in the episode Sinclair and the Wormley Witches. In the series 29 episode of Passion and Pizza how it is that Auntie Wainwright's looking for something to wear to help him blend in, almost disappear, to which Tom replies, we did it for Smiler and you don't disappear much further than him. Stephen Lewis died on the 12th of August 2015 at a nursing home in Wanstead, London. Known to everyone as Auntie Wainwright, she's Howard's aunt. Whilst they both have a general tendency for being devious, Auntie Wainwright is much more skillful at it. Jean Alexander began her acting career in 1949 at the Adelphi Guild Theatre in Macclesfield. She later worked in repertory, acting as a wardrobe mistress and a stage manager. Her television debut was in Deadline Midnight in 1961, followed by Zed Cars in 1962. Her film credits include Scandal and Willie's War. Alexander first appeared in Coronation Street in 1962 in a minor role as a landlady. In 1964, she returned to the programme as Gossipy Hilda Ogden, finally leaving 23 years later. Her final scenes in the programme aired on the 25th of December 1987, attracting nearly 27 million viewers, the highest number in the show's history. In 2005, a TV Times magazine poll voted her the greatest soap opera star of all time. Auntie Wainwright first appears in the December 1988 Christmas special Crumbs and returned for a second guest appearance in the Christmas 1989 special What's Santa Brought for Nora Then? She finally becomes a regular character in 1992 from the start of series 14, remaining until the end of the show in 2010. Being known as Auntie might give a false impression to people who have not yet met her her antiquated dress sense and apparent frailty hide her sly and grasping disposition. She owns a cluttered and dingy bric-a-brac shop located here and will use any excuse to lure in unsuspecting passers-by. 
even someone just browsing or asking for directions, they don't go without Auntie selling them something. Auntie Wainwright might be a reincarnation of two earlier second-hand shop owners. In the Series 6 episode of Bicycle Made for Three, Percy Westerfield, who preferred to be called Dirk, was equally as miserly and money-grabbing as Auntie. Then in Series 6 episode, Serenade for Tight Jeans and Metal Detector, the trio visit Dougie, an unseen character who had a shop on this corner. Clegg is reluctant to enter as he says Dougie is a red-hot salesman. In later episodes, Clegg is similarly hesitant to go into Auntie's shop. However, when Roy Clark wrote the pilot of Summer Wine, he also wrote the pilot of Open All Hours, that included the similarly avaricious and scheming shopkeeper, Albert Arkwright. Whenever someone enters the shop, Auntie will often surprise them by talking through a loudspeaker, saying things like, stay where you are, or don't touch anything, you'll be electrocuted. Auntie Wainwright takes advantage of being Howard's aunt by blackmailing him into purchasing things from her, often his disguises or gifts for Marina. Otherwise, she might let slip to Pearl what he is doing. Norman Clegg is especially reluctant to go into her shop because she always sells him something he does not want, but she finds ways to trick him into entering. She is particularly mean and pretends to be cheated when she is asked for the slightest discount. In the 1995 New Year special, The Man Who Nearly Knew Pavarotti, she sends Smiler out on an errand and charges him one pound for the use of a bicycle. But she has given him staff discount. Although she's mainly based in her bric-a-brac shop, she has another shop in the town as she is also Uncle Henry Limited, offering loans. In the series 16 episode, Once in a Moonlit Junkyard, we learn she even has a scrapyard since the bloke that owned it couldn't afford to pay her. Having the shop is particularly useful for many of the plots as Auntie can sell or hire out virtually anything you might want. Sometimes it's like the fancy dress costume shop of the Mr Ben children's book and TV series. There seems to be an outfit for any occasion. The properties department did an excellent job in finishing the shop with every imaginable item from ornaments and curios to a full suit of armour. Auntie basically has something for everyone even if they didn't really want it. Jean Alexander died on the 14th of October 2016 in Southport, Merseyside. Tom Simonite is Compo's long-lost son, arriving just after his father's death, played by Bill Owen's real-life son, Tom Owen. However, his last of the Summer Wine debut is in the December 1991 special, Situations Vacant, as a bank customer at a cash dispenser. Tom Owen trained as a stage manager at Leatherhead Theatre in 1966. He worked extensively in repertory both as an actor and director. He made his television debut in the 1968 Southern Television series Freewheelers. Many television series followed, including The Piglet Files, Upstairs Downstairs and The Bill. He was a member of the Royal Shakespeare Company, playing on Broadway in their production of London Assurance. His performance as Crap in a production of Beckett's Crap's Last Tape was likened to those given by Michael Gambon, John Hurt and Harold Pinter. He has appeared in the West End and starred in over 20 pantomimes and several feature films. After the death of actor Bill Owen and the on-screen funeral of Compo, we learned that he had at least one fling in his youth that resulted in the birth of a child. A letter arrives for Compo from his son Tom, mentioning Compo's two grandchildren. Tom arrives in town just after his father's funeral in the Series 21 episode, From Here to Paternity. Everyone seems to have heard news of his arrival and they congregate here at what was the New Rock pub, renamed The Feathers for the show. Clegg and Truly are waiting to give Tom the news of his father's death. Having been spotted by Pearl, Howard and Marina are frantically cycling away from the pub just as Tom arrives. He swerves his beaten up van to avoid them and the van's exhaust pipe falls off. Truly and Clegg break the news about his late father. He does not seem particularly concerned apart from what might have been left in a will and how he's going to get the exhaust repaired. 
He seems far more distraught when he recalls the death of a pet mouse in the series 28 episode Elegy for Small Creature and Clandestine Track Bike. Conveniently, Wesley's on hand to sort out the exhaust, while Tom makes the most of the hospitality of the ladies who feel compelled to offer sympathy and drinks. Tom is just as indolent as his late father, but seems a bit more enterprising in his attempts to maintain his slothful lifestyle. In the series 29 episode, Will the Genuine Racer Please Stand Up? Truly says of Tom, just like his father, they have this instinctive gift for unemployment. Occasionally, Clegg and Truly take advantage of Tom's desire to live up to his father's reputation by convincing him to emulate some of Compo's antics. Tom has a scruffy puppet dog called Waldo, which he aspires to use in a ventriloquist act, despite being utterly unconvincing. Nora feels somewhat maternal towards Tom and often showers him with affection, much to his embarrassment. After living in his converted bus with his associate Mrs Avery and her niece Babs, Tom and Mrs Avery move into his late father's home. Babs did not appear to live here and her absence was never explained. Not long after this, in series 23 episode A Brief Excursion Into the Fast Lane, Tom says Mrs Avery has thrown him out and he goes to live with Smiler, although it's not certain how long their arrangement continued. For most of the time, Tom is paired with Smiler, working for Auntie Rainwright. He considers himself the leader and the planner of the duo, often leaving Smiler to struggle with Auntie Wainwright's antiquated handcart while he strolls on ahead. When not working for Auntie, Tom can be usually found on his allotment in the shed that used to be here, avoiding the repo man and any other responsibilities. After Smiler is written out of the series, Tom continues to work for Auntie Wainwright until the end of the show. Tom Owen died on the 8th of October, 2022. Mrs Avery is Tom's live-in associate and something of a battle axe, yet rather easily manipulated. We first meet Mrs Avery on the road as she runs over Howard's unoccupied bicycle while driving Tom's bus. Julie T. Wallace started in the theatre in the late 1970s. She made her television debut in the title role of the BBC production of Faye Weldon's The Life and Loves of a She-Devil. She played a small part in the James Bond film The Living Daylights and starred in two of the Comic Strip Presents stories. In the 2000s, she continued to make regular film and television appearances in supporting roles. Babs, played by Helen Tureya, merits a mention as she made three appearances as the niece of Mrs Avery. Helen's only other known TV role was in two episodes of Always and Everyone, also in 2000. Although Mrs Avery stands six feet two inches tall, much larger than Tom, he still manages to manipulate her into doing things she probably knows she shouldn't, like pretending to be a fortune teller when Barry is disillusioned with golf in the series 22 episode Hey Big Vendor. Although Tom always insists that she's merely an acquaintance, Mrs Avery is under the impression that Tom has promised to marry her. Her niece Babs is a rather large and troubled teenager, wearing heavy black eye makeup and a permanent sulk. If this was an attempt to engage a younger audience, it was not working. In an ironic foreshadowing in the series 21 episode Wagoner's Roll, Mrs Avery says, I love her, but she's got all the personality of a turnip, in addition to which she's got no talent. The character was so unpopular that she was axed after just three episodes in series 21 without any explanation. After a brief spell of living in the bus, Mrs Avery and Tom move into Compo's old home next door to Nora Batty. Apparently Mrs Avery is very house proud, although we never see inside Compo's old home until series 29, well after Alvin has moved in. During her stay, Mrs Avery begins a rivalry with Nora, trying to outdo each other, cleaning windows or vacuuming rugs. This was not to last. Finally, Mrs Avery must have realised Tom was a waste of her effort and in the series 23 episode A Brief Excursion in the Fast Lane, we hear from Tom that she has thrown him out and she's never seen again.